if you had the money to spend to hire a designer, one of the things you would get that would, that would take your space up to the next level is the lighting because interior designers do an entire plan just based on lighting. But today I'm going to talk about one kind of light and help give you some guidelines for how to get the right size. And this applies even if you're a renter and you think, I can't have a chandelier in my apartment. It's not wired for one. These days you can find lighting that doesn't have to be hardwired in. Even chandeliers or over the table lighting. There are tons of light fixtures now that can be swagged from a plug. I want you to stick around and make sure that you can add that statement lighting to your rooms to make them really go to the next level. So I wanna talk first about the sizing the chandelier. And I'm gonna talk about how to pick the right size chandelier in every space, the dining table, the bedroom, the bathroom, believe it or not, your office. All of these spaces can use a chandelier because there's one thing that every room needs and it's three sources of light ambient light, task light, and accent lights. And so if you don't have all these lights in your space, this is one way that you can make sure you get enough light and the right size fixture for your space. And if you're wondering if you have a vision of crystal chandeliers and you think that's all there is, there is a chandelier to fit every style, rustic, modern, traditional, transitional, boho. There's a chandelier that goes with every kind of style. So how do you make sure you get the right size? And especially if you're going to hire an electrician, you want to get the right size. So I'm going to talk first about dining rooms because that's the most common place that we see chandeliers. Although I would argue not the only place that they really look fantastic. So here's how you decide the right size light fixture to go over your dining table and you look at the length of your dining table and the width. So the, if your dining table is 30 inches, you subtract 12 inches, and that means you can get up to an 18 inch around fixture because that gives six inches on either side of the table where people can get up without bumping their head. And the same goes for the length of the table, and you're not very often gonna find a, a fixture that is as long as the table. So it's really the width that is the constraining factor for the size. But you almost always want to go for a bigger fixture rather than a smaller fixture if you're sort of on the cusp between sizes. The other thing you want to factor in is the shape of your table because you want the shape of your chandelier to go with the shape of your table. That doesn't mean that you have to have a round table and a round chandelier. That just means if you have a really long rectangular table, you don't want to put a smaller round chandelier over it. Use the, the shape of your table to guide the shape of your chandelier. And over a table, you want to make sure that your chandelier is hung at the proper height because a chandelier in a room has to go a little bit higher, but over a table, it needs to hang a little bit lower. And the right height is about 30 to 34 inches above your table. And the reason for that is because it makes the table setting feel more intimate if the lighting is closer to it. If you have a really long table, you can consider hanging two fixtures over it instead of one, just like you would a kitchen island. So it doesn't necessarily have to be just one fixture. Now let's move on to the bedroom. Chandeliers can be pretty incredible in a bedroom. And the way to determine the size chandelier for a room like a bedroom is to take the width of the bedroom and the length of the bedroom and add it together. So let's say it's a 12 by 12 room. That's 24 inches. So you want to get a fixture that's at least 24 inches around. Now, the height of a chandelier in a room like a bedroom depends a little bit on the height of your ceiling, but you don't want it to come down below about 72 inches. And the higher your ceilings are, the higher your chandelier can go because you're going to want to fill up more of the vertical space in your, in your room. So if you have vaulted ceilings, you would hang your chandelier a little bit higher so tall ceilings can also accommodate chandeliers that themselves have more height. In addition to being able to be hung higher, the chandelier itself can have more height. So there's a guideline for the height of the fixture based on your ceilings. So the rule of thumb is the chandelier should be two to three inches for every foot of height. So if you have a 10 foot ceiling, you're going to want to have a chandelier that takes up about 20 inches. That's just a rough guideline. You're going to find when you go shopping, there's nothing that's going to match this formula exactly, but this helps get the idea in your mind that you need to make your fixture in proportion to what it's lighting up. 
the size of the room. The bigger the room, the bigger the fixture. The bigger the table, the bigger the fixture. It's the same rule of thumb as it is in a bedroom, as it is if you want to hang a chandelier in a living room where you measure the length and the width, and that's the minimum size you should go with. And that's also true if you're trying to hang one in a foyer. So now I'm gonna answer a few frequently asked questions. So what if I have no light above my table? I get this question a lot because a lot of us are renting our homes or we're not in a position where we wanna pay an electrician thousand dollars to come and add a, a junction box above our table. Use a plug-in fixture and swag it up above your table. Those little hooks that you can screw into your ceiling, you can cover up the hole that that makes in a jiffy. So that's an easy way to add a light over your table if you're a renter. But if you absolutely don't wanna do that, be sure you're adding some accent lighting on your table. Now there's tons and tons of plug-in fixtures and rechargeable light bulbs and rechargeable fixtures that can give a lot of the mood lighting that a chandelier is giving. So if you can't get one above your table, put one on your table or put some sconces on the wall next to your table. Those kind of things help to add a lot of mood lighting to your dining area. Now, let's say your dining table is not in the center of the room. Do you want your chandelier to be in the center of the room or the center of the table? And the answer is the center of the table. If the light fixture is for the table, light fixtures that are for tables, as I said, they hang at a lower level. So you want them to be over the middle of the table and not the middle of the room. And you can see in this example what it looks like when they've taken a chandelier and it's not really achieving the purpose that it was meant to do, which is to light the table. So what if I have an open concept? Can I have, can I still have a chandelier? And absolutely, you can. In fact, you can have more than one chandelier. You can have one that lights up a dining area and a separate one that lights up the seating area or the living area. And they don't necessarily have to be the same, but I would keep them in the same material. So if you have brass, I would have a brass fixture in both places, but they don't have to be identical. Does my chandelier have to have shades? We've seen a lot of chandeliers with and without shades, and it doesn't have to. It's total personal preference, but a lot of people do like a chandelier with shades at a dining table because it helps to make the light not quite so bright. Chandeliers now come in every price point and every size and every style. So if you're looking to upgrade your lighting, you should look into getting a chandelier. And if you have any questions about what size is right for your space, add them to the comments.